It's Sunday, November the 22th. And welcome to everyone in the sanctuary and to those also watching on, uh, online. For the benefit of our newcomers, as they do every week, uh, and the safety of all in the sanctuary, we ask you to follow these guidelines throughout the service. Uh, face masks are required at all times. Uh, please remain in your current seats until you're dismissed by an usher during the final hymn. And you can deposit any tithes and offerings or any other items you wish to give to us in the offering boxes at the rear of the sanctuary. Uh, the, church opus, the church office is open. And uh, remember, they do have new hours. They're open Monday from 8 till 2, and then Tuesday through Friday from 9 till 3. And you can give them a call if you have any needs or wants or any questions, feel free to do so. Our secretary is more than happy to answer. Um, please register your attendance today by way of your phone. You can register uh, by dialing that number you see up on the screens and texting them. Uh, if you can't do that, ask somebody around you to do it for you, or let us know at the front desk and we'll make sure that uh, your information is, is turned in. We have a number of announcements today. Uh, the flowers today are given to the glory of God and in recognition of Richard and Ganner Waltz by Rennie Weibel. Thank you, Rennie. And the arrangement of roses right here uh, are given to the glory of God uh, and all praise to Jesus by Gloria Smith. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the Food Pantry Thanksgiving Basket Project has been very successful as we have exceeded the number of turkeys requested for Thanksgiving, uh, which is wonderful because you know, we were kind of short last week and we made that announcement and everybody did that and it was terrific. Um, due to changes in COVID-19 precautions, however, we will not be preparing Chris uh, baskets for Christmas. Uh, thanks to all who generously donated to this worthy project, more than 25 needy families will be able to celebrate Thanksgiving this year with a little bit easier. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do both Thanksgiving and Christmas next year. Uh, the decorating of the Sanctuary Chrismon trees, yes, it's that time, folks, has been changed to this Tuesday. It was Monday, but now we've changed it to Tuesday, uh, November 24th at 11 a.m. Anyone interested in helping with the decorating of the Chrismon trees is welcome to attend. Uh, if you would like to participate in the church Christmas card project, envelopes are on the table across from the Welcome Center, and they can be placed in the offering box or sent to the church secretary and need to be submitted by next Sunday, December the 6th. That's not next Sunday, that's two Sundays from now. December the 6th is the deadline for that. Uh, please indicate Christmas card project in the memo area of your check, that's for the Christmas card. Uh, anyone wishing to place a poinsettia in the sanctuary uh, at the end of the Advent season for Christmas needs to complete an order form also by December the 6th, that's two Sundays from now. The forms, those forms can be found also at the welcome table or the uh, table across from the welcome center. Uh, please indicate poinsettia on the memo section on your check. Uh, anyone wishing to place flowers in the sanctuary for the year 2021 needs to complete a form that could be found on the table across from the Welcome Center or in the December newsletter. Dates are available on a first-come, first-served basis. Please complete all the information requested on the form. Now, let us start our morning worship with the following call to worship. O oh God, we come into your courts from all walks of life with praise and thanksgiving. We come in celebration and song. We come filled with gratitude for your gifts to us and ask your guidance in sharing them. We come as those who have received blessing upon blessing. In thanksgiving, our hearts are filled and in joy, may we share blessing upon blessing in Jesus' name with those in need. Help us to be stewards of our creation sharing the abundance. We come into your courts, and with praise and thanksgiving, we come to worship and celebration and song. May God bless the reading of these words. Now let us praise the Lord as we lift our voices to his glory with the hymn, We Gather Together. We gather together 
beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the light we were winning, thou, Lord, wast at our side, all glory be thine. We all do extol thee, Thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord. O oh God, we gather together, separated by life-saving distancing, but united more than ever in spirit. We know we're in a, we are in a war against COVID-19 together, and the more together we are, the better and stronger we will emerge. We know the challenges are enormous, yet so are the opportunities, for know for no, we all have the opportunity and time to be lifesavers and life enhancers. We give thanks to those who are on the front line taking care of those who are not well. We give thanks for the researchers who are working at breakneck speed to find cure and a vaccine. We give thanks to our leaders, federal, state, and local for their dedication to all of us. We give thanks for the providers of our daily needs who go to work in spite of the risk. We give thanks to those who have ramped up their ability to produce life-saving supplies and we pray for the well-being of all of our lifesavers, for those who are not well, that they recover fully. We pray for those enduring difficulty, that they may overcome their challenges. We pray that a cure and vaccine will soon be available, and that we all, family, friends, Americans, and the entire world, may be healed in body and spirit. We ask you, O oh God, to bless our leaders, our frontline caregivers, our lifesavers, and life enhancers. We ask you, O oh God, to bless our nation, to bless the world, to bless everyone. We ask you, O oh God, to open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your words this morning so that we may serve you better. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I know it's a little gray out, but it is a beautiful day that God has given us. And we are thankful that we can be here in the sanctuary together on this Lord's Day. Amen. There was a, uh, an announcement by the governor this week that um, we should limit the numbers in the sanctuary to 50. Okay, one, two. No. Um, then it was changed to 100. Uh, and we could actually petition if we thought we could do more, and what's the plan for that? I'm thankful for the way state officials have looked at the rising numbers of COVID-19 cases, the hospitalizations, all the things that are affected, and how we can continue to remain safe. 
I'm thankful that that is being done state by state and we, our neighboring states, Maryland, New Jersey, they are having some very difficult times with increases. But we pray that we can continue to be safe. I uh, had a, a pastor friend post this that they had heard and it talked about other pastors and churches out of three categories. The one is out of concern for the safety of their members, they canceled services, resulting in some accusing them of bowing to the government. Another group of pastors out of concern for spiritual, spiritual health of their members, they continued to provide in-person services resulting in some accusing them of not caring for people. And then out of concern for their members, some have continued to meet while enacting safety measures such as social distancing and masks. And ironically, in an effort to find the right balance and compromise, this group was criticized by both sides. So where do we win? You know, we've had a, a newspaper article this week that uh, reporters went to a church, a couple of churches, just to get quotes from pastors, and they were of different opinions. I am glad that as a coordinating committee, we met yesterday to say, we are going to continue to meet together as we have since July, because we have done it carefully and safely. We do have a list, as you know, of those who are in attendance. So if something would happen, we actually have a contact tracing list. We want you to know that we are doing that and are continuing to clean and keep things safe. It's tough when you look at how things are regulated, but more than that, how we need to maintain safety. I take the mask off and Phil does because we are at least 10 feet away and um, sometimes you can read my lips instead of hearing what I'm saying, I guess. But we're trying again to be safe and if you come close, I'll put it on to be able to uh, keep us both safe by wearing a mask. I am thankful that as we look to this week of thanksgiving, that uh, we can give thanks. Oh, I know there are some of you who are going to be disappointed because the gathering that you had always anticipated that kind of looks like that Norman Rockwell painting with everybody around the table and the big bird and all the other things happening, it may not be that way. But through technology, you can be in touch with family. You can share with friends by phone calls and you can give thanks. I even heard that Macy's parade is virtual. Not sure what that means. Um, not sure how they can do that balloon of Snoopy without having people holding it on the ground, but we'll see what happens. Things will change. But the thing that does remain the same is that God is in control. Amen. Thanksgiving, what a lovely time of year. And we do give thanks today. As we share together in prayer, let us remember as Phil was praying, we remember those who are assisting and helping and looking for cures, at least a vaccine to help slow and prevent. We pray for those who are on the carrying line and on the cleaning line to make sure things are sanitized in hospitals and medical offices where we visit and where we need to be in the days ahead. We do give thanks. I do recognize, and I think you do as well, in the midst of all of this, 
There are people who isolate, quarantine. But what that means is they isolate and are by themselves and are lonely. And there are times that depression sets in. We have to remember those as well because it's not easy when you can't surround yourself with friends and family. So pray for one another in these days as well. Let's pray together. With hearts filled, O oh God, we come to you and give thanks. Because in this time of worship, we know that we are in your protection, that we are safe. We have done all that we can to remain safe. But you, O oh God, watch over us. We thank you for all that you have done and are doing in our lives, how you have created each one of us, and, oh God, we are in awe of you for all of your creation. And we give you thanks. Today, oh God, we especially give you thanks for your grace, your love given to us, even though we don't deserve it. And you showed us in such a special way by loving us so much, you gave us your son, Jesus. We thank you for him, for his life, and for the way you allowed him to die for us. Oh God, what an amazing gift through, yes, your amazing grace. We thank you, God, that we can come today to worship you. It's good to see one another, but more importantly, we have come to worship you and to praise you. God, thank you for each one present, for the homes, the families, the extended families represented here. And we ask your blessings on each. We also pray today, O oh God, for those who know that it is not good for them to be out because of compromised situations. We pray for those who watch online and how they continue to praise you for their protection. Lord, in this week, as we look to Thanksgiving, we know that we have page upon page of lists of those things for which we can be thankful. And we know, oh God, that we can give thanks each and every day instead of waiting for one special time. We know that this will be different this year, oh God. There will be some who will be by themselves, some who will be gathering by Zoom call or by phone with others as they share. But Lord, we ask your blessing as we give thanks together for our nation, for our people, of this country. We give thanks for a peaceful election and we look forward to, oh God, a time of transition that will also be peaceful. That is looked to by other countries where there is constant conflict as one thing that we have that many others do not have. And we thank you, God for the way we can live in this country. We pray, oh God, for those countries around the world right now that are experiencing chaos, some as armed conflict, but others as because of weather-related issues across Central America, oh God, the, the hurricanes that have hit have caused such damage of flooding and mudslides and destruction of homes and property and gardens that are the livelihoods of people. We pray, oh God, that relief can be taken to those even where roads are out. We pray that they will have the sustenance they need and can find the clean water to drink. Oh God, we thank you that there are 
agencies and missionaries who are there to make a difference. We ask your blessing on them in these days. And Lord, where there is conflict, we ask for your peace, the peace that only you can bring. And we ask, Lord, that those who call upon your name in these countries around the world, that they too may be the peacemakers in those places. Oh God, we are so thankful that we know you and that you call us your children. Today, God, we do pray for those within our church family who are dealing with uh, different kinds of treatments and looking toward other procedures and doctor's appointments. We ask for your, your blessing for them, the comfort that they need. And we pray, oh God, for healing. Healing in the lives of those who need it in such dramatic ways. And yes, Lord, particularly those on the front lines who are working to help those heal from COVID and other different ailments that are faced in hospital. Lord, we ask today for your forgiveness. For we are ones who have sinned. We've sinned against you. We've left you out. We've thought we could do it on our own, but oh God, we know that only through you do we have the power to do what we do. Please forgive us and cleanse us. And oh God, especially today, we pray for the leaders of our country. We pray for those who have been elected and we ask for your blessing for them all as they look to the days ahead. May they seek you in all the decisions that are being made. Today, oh God, we give this time of worship to you and we offer this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I'd like to invite Sue Moore to come this morning and to share with us and she uh, has that privilege of chairing our stewardship committee and is going to be share, sharing with us as uh, this final Sunday of our stewardship emphasis. Uh-oh, I'm caught <laughs> with my glasses. Uh, yes, it sure is a lot different than we did last year. Uh, last year we learned about our spiritual gifts and how we could use them to be God's stewards. Then we all participated in this wonderful meal that was catered for us, and we got to have lots of fellowship around the tables. We had over 100 people there, and it was amazing and delightful to spend that time with one another. But boy, the difference a year makes. Uh, we've all been turned topsy-turvy, inside out, upside down, some days we don't even know what day it is because we're stuck in the same environment day in, day out. And, oh, did I really go to bed last night? Wow. But God has helped us to adjust to our new ways of doing almost everything, including our worship service. You have seen that difference up front and personal. Uh, but. We've had to adjust, just as everyone else has, and we decided, even though when this first came out, Vicki and I got together and we had a little bit of uh, tossing some ideas about uh, what, how we could do the dinner and all this, because we were so hopeful and that it was going to be all over by this time and we could still have our big dinner. So that's been pushed back for next year. We'll still do that lovely dinner at some point and use all the neat things and ideas that we came up with. But this year, we had to go to a virtual type presentation. And what we did was with first Mr. Harry Anthony. He came in and spoke with the pastor and all of us. And he showed us how our commitments 
helped to maintain this beautiful building, the salaries of our people, and everything that needs to be done in the church. But he also shared with us how he and his wife handle stewardship in their home, especially because they both attend different churches. Uh, and it was delightful to hear and very eye-opening how they handled being faithful to God. Then we had Patricia, Patricia and Tom Ward uh, tell us about their experience and how they had taken the course of financial peace and through that course, they were able to pay off all their credit cards and even put money aside to uh, fix up things in their home that they wanted to do. And it gave them hope, hope that they could get through this bumpy time in their life and continue in the same way, continue to serve God. Then we had Rebecca. Rebecca shared her love of our God in her little presentation. And it was neat to hear her say how he led her to Thailand and how he led her to Pastor Taylor and how he had changed her life and let her dedicate her life to him. And she showed in her voice and her mannerisms the love she has for our God. And it was neat to hear their testimonies to show that faithful, hopeful, and loving that we have for our God. Now, I'm kind of summing everything up today because we do have our church out. It's in the narthex. And if you checked your mail, hopefully Friday or Saturday, you got uh, a letter from the pastor. And in that letter, he thanked all of you and all of the other members for their faithful giving to the church. And I want to say thank you also. We have tried in these days to continue as much of our uh, things uh, and services that we try to do for the church uh, without, uh, I can't think of the words, without having uh, to harm anyone, to keep everyone safe. Well, in the letter that you got, you also got a commitment card. And hopefully you brought it today. And at the end of the service, when you're dismissed, if you would please put that in the church. And because we didn't have a dinner, we made some little ornaments for you as a reminder to be faithful to our God, to be hopeful, and to continue loving our God and our Savior. And of course, there's a little tie there because if you want to make it into an ornament for your tree, you can put it there. If you want to tie it to the window, especially over the dishes, ladies, and you can remind yourself that even though we're doing these dishes, he is a loving God. And that's something we have to do every day, no matter what. And just to remind you, maybe you want to stick it where you put your keys so that when you go out, you can remind yourself all about your faithful, hopeful, and loving God. So don't forget to put these in the envelope. As you can see, they are that way they remain anonymous. No one knows how much you're committing in your tithes and offerings. I have mine ready. When I go out, I'm going to drop it into the church, and it'll be ready. OK? And if you forgot yours or didn't receive it yet, uh, Agnes and I have some. And if you want to raise your hand, if you want one, whoops. Uh, 
We will pass these out on my way out here, and that way you can participate. If not, you can mail it to the church. There is a, uh, an address envelope inside, so that you can just mail it, and it'll be taken care of then that way. Okay? We want to thank you again for your faithful, generous offerings that you have continued to provide and we hope you will bless us again this coming year with your faithful giving as well. Thank you. Let's uh, take a look at the, our next hymn, Let All Things Now Living. I've heard that word thankful a lot today, and uh, you will hear it even more, because I am thankful for Harry and his testimony, for Patricia and Tom and their testimony, yes, even for my wife and her testimony. Last week, I was so thankful for the testimony from Joyce Lake as she's saying, I'm available to you. What a testimony that is for all of us. And I'm thankful to Sue, who shared this morning how, and, and how she's encouraged us that we can prayerfully make our personal commitment. We have used this theme of being faithful, hopeful, and loving, and it's how we should live and give every day because that is really the only response that we have to God who is always faithful, hopeful, and loving to us. For that, all that God has done and does for us, we are truly thankful. Over the years, I've thought about it and I don't think that there is an error involved when churches highlight stewardship in November. Mainly because they want the pastor only to talk about 
stewardship once a year, and if you can just concisely do that, maybe on one Sunday, it won't hurt as bad. But some would say that it relates to only being a month away from the new year, and it provides time for financial planning committees to create a spending plan for the new year with anticipated income provided through a commitment made by those in the congregation. See, there are many people that feel that an obligation to make a commitment is there so that plans can be made for ministry. I know that. I hear that. But over the years, some of you know me, and I have always been of the opinion that this emphasis is strategically placed in the month of Thanksgiving. You see, stewardship is a year-round scriptural emphasis on how we're supposed to live our lives. It doesn't have anything to do with dollars and cents. It's beneficial to emphasize this month, though, and especially on this Sunday, only four days away from Thanksgiving. You see, our stewarding should always be centered on thankful giving. Over the years, I've tried to teach, preach, and live stewardship and have used a variety of scripture texts that you have heard before on this Stewardship Sunday. There's a wonderful passage in Mark 12 that tells of a time when Jesus was with his disciples outside the temple and they watched a poor widow walk by the treasury and watched her put in just a few pennies. He says to his disciples, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything that she had, all she had to live on. We can interpret that, that she didn't have any discretionary funds, no excess, no abundance, but she gave because she wanted to give and because God had allowed her to live and to survive. Which isn't easy in those times for a widow. There's a text I've used many times, it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, where Paul describes for us the people of Macedonia. I love this passage. They, it was during a severe ordeal of affliction. It was their abundant joy and their poverty that overflowed in a wealth of generosity. Now you figure out how that works. They gave beyond their means to support the ministry to the saints. The kicker is this, they gave themselves first to the Lord and then gave their resources. The challenge from this has always been to ask ourselves the question, do we really want to follow Jesus? If so, then give. Give yourself to the Lord. No strings attached. Just give yourselves away, and then you can truly, freely give. I think you've heard me say before that I would love to preach from Exodus 36 on stewardship time. The thankfulness of the children of Israel. They were able to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. They were so thankful that God had delivered them from Egypt, that God had continued to provide for them, that they brought offerings. They brought offerings of their personal resources. They brought cloth and they brought bronze and they brought gold and precious stones and more. And they continued to bring until finally the builders came to Moses and said, the people are bringing much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. What they had already brought was more than enough to do all the work. 
Wouldn't it be great to be able to say, we don't need any more resources because our missionaries are fully funded. The agencies in the community have all the money that they need. And everything is cared for. God has given to us in abundance. You see, I looked at those again and thought, boy, I could, I could make a whole bunch of different sermons real quick and, and put them all together and take a couple of hours. Because the longer you preach, people are going to be willing to give just to get it over with. But I haven't used this particular passage. And this is from Colossians. Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. It's going to be on the screen. You can hear it. You can read it and see it. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Amen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Doesn't sound like a normal stewardship passage, does it? Doesn't sound like it's about finances. It isn't about receiving an offering or, or helping to physically build or sustain a building. You see, Paul is instructing us in the way that we should live each day and how we should treat each other and forgive one another. He underscores that love binds everything together in harmony. Over and over, Paul tells us to give thanks. And be thankful, he says, with gratitude, praise God, give thanks to God through Jesus Christ. It's over and over. I really don't know of a better passage for today than to have Paul give us instructions on how to be the best stewards we can be in our daily lives. To be compassionate, to be kind, to be humble, to be meek and patient and tolerant and forgiving and loving. You see, if we hear the word and live our lives as Paul was instructing those in Colossae, we will be good stewards of what God has given us. We will be giving ourselves away to others. We'll be supporting others. We'll be hearing the cries of those in need, those affected by disasters, those who are out of work and out of food. We will hear the cries of families who have lost loved ones to COVID. And we will give our time and, yes, our treasure to help others in despair. You know, sometimes it's like sacrilege when a pastor would get up and say, I need to tell you that the trustees, and I'm glad he's on the back row, the trustees don't need your money. And the finance committee really doesn't need your money. Our missionaries overseas don't need your money. As much as you and I, as people of God, need to give. 
It's in the very nature of who God is. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life for us. Every day, every day, the Spirit of God gives gifts. We can't do anything else but give in return. With the anxiety of COVID-19 swirling around us and great needs of the rising cases, we have the opportunity to give so that others can survive and give so that others may know that they are loved by the God who gave them life and gave them a savior. When we do that, we will be thankful giving. Not just giving. Not giving because we have to. Not giving out of an obligation. Not even giving out of guilt. But we are giving out of thanksgiving for what God has done for us. We will be thankful in our giving. Faithful, hopeful, loving. Let's pray together. Gracious God, you have indeed overwhelmed us. You have given in abundance. Sometimes we wonder how we have survived through that day or this day. And then we realize you were there. Oh God, we know that there are physical issues, there are emotional things that we deal with, there are deep spiritual issues that we wrestle with each day. But oh God, you are there and for that presence, we give thanks. Help us, oh God, to know that in every way, you surround us and overwhelm us with your gift of love. Help us today, O oh God, to give you the thanks in return that you deserve. We pray today in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Sue mentioned a church. See this picture? Some of you have never seen that church because this may be the first time you have been here on a Commitment Sunday. This model church is just outside that doorway at the top of the stairs because we usually would have it here on the front table and people would come in procession and put their commitment cards in that envelope and drop it in. We can't do that. There's... We've never done it this way before. But that next, see there is a slot in the top of that church building. And it, it fits these very nicely. And those of you who are part of the congregation are used to this. If you're not a part of, of this family for a long time, we don't, we don't ask people to, to give until it hurts because you know, Baptists have a low tolerance of pain, and that really wouldn't work out very well. We just ask people to give in thanksgiving for what God has done for them. So as you are thinking about how you can be faithful, hopeful, and loving, the reminder is there. But prayerfully, not out of obligation, prayerfully, Place your commitment cards in there on your way out today. And if you would want to make a commitment later on, you can pick up one of the cards on the way out. You can ponder that at home, pray over that, and drop it in the mail. And yes, only our financial secretary knows, and we just record these commitments so that we'll know what we can work with in the coming days. 
I am thankful for each of you and for the way you give yourselves away and for the way God has blessed you. We're going to sing another Thanksgiving hymn because we don't get that opportunity often. We're going to stand as we close and sing, Now Thank We All Our God. I thought it only appropriate as we give thanks to a loving God. Let's stand as we sing. We do give thanks for each of you, and we pray blessings on the commitment cards and your personal commitment as you give your heart to Christ and you give yourself away. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.